Hello and welcome to a special episode of my podcast all about knitting and crochet and my yarn shop here in Wiesbaden, Germany. I'm Kiko and today is September 8th, 2021. And this episode will be all about this year's Sock Madness. In case you haven't heard of the Sock Madness and you haven't seen my older videos, the Sock Madness is a sock knitting competition that took place for the 15th time this year and somehow I managed to miss it for the last 14 years. So this year was the first year that I really learned about it and um, got to know what it was. And that was in February of this year and all of February was the time um, that we were able to sign up. So as soon as I found out all the, all the details, I signed up and that meant that I had access to some warm up patterns. So that what happens is when you sign up for the Sock Madness and you decide to take part, you get all the patterns for free, but they're only available for a certain time um, during the Sock Madness. And, um, but at the end, once you've participated, you get all the patterns that were part of the Sock Madness. So when I joined, the first warm-up pattern wasn't available anymore, but the second was, um, and I knit that. And then I didn't knit the third, but then I knitted most of the um, the round um, the socks for the different rounds. I'll explain about that a bit later. Um, but during the sock matters, I didn't knit any of the bonus patterns. So once you finished um, a round, you you uh, if you finished a round on time, you got a bonus pattern. Yeah, I think I'll start showing socks now and then I'll explain how that works in more detail. So February was the month for the signups and the warm-up patterns. And the warm-up pattern that I knitted was the cochineal pattern by Anna McKeele. And I used Opal Yarn Black Dragon. That's this grey yarn and um, a yellow. And... Um, I think, yeah, for the warm-up pattern, you didn't have to knit a certain size. You could knit any size you wanted. So I knit the socks so they fit me and um, I already used them. Um, I hadn't planned on making this video, so um, I just started wearing them. And then when I decided to um, do this video, I put them in the washing machine last night with a lot of other things. And... Um, something in the wash must have lost some color so the it's this is not dirt this is just color from something else and um, yeah I managed to dye some white yarn that was in the washing machine <laughs> into blue but that's what happens I don't mind I wash most of the things I make in the machine especially if it's sock yarn I always wash it in the machine and um, yeah, I probably should be more careful which colors I put together. But if you have something that's dark and light in the same thing, you have to make a choice. And I don't mind having this bit of color there. Maybe it's going to wash out. Maybe not. I don't think it'll. anybody will notice. But this is the sock pattern. It's a two color pattern um, with a bit of color work in the leg and a bit of color work in the foot. Um, with this sock... The grey um, happened to be in the lighter part of the grey, so the pattern doesn't show as clearly as here where it's the darker grey. But I don't mind, I really like the socks, that's why I've been wearing them. And that was the second warm-up pattern, the third warm-up pattern I did not knit. And then once February was over, when March started, we um, started with round one. And the way things work is that... Um, in the beginning, we get a list with all the materials that we're going to need for the different socks. So whether it's one color or several colors and whether we need some special tools like a crochet hook or, or beads or things like that. And then at some point, um, we get an announcement which point in that list we are going to need for the next round. And from that time on, between a few seconds and I think 48 hours, the pattern will arrive in our mailbox and then we can start knitting and then um, oh no it's not round one after the warm-up pattern we did the um, um, what's the word and where are the socks uh, we have to make sure we get onto a team 
And to do that, we had to qualify. That's it, it's the qualifying pattern. Um, so we got the qualifying pattern and then we had two weeks time to knit the socks exactly the way the pattern was written and to a specified size. So starting with the um, qualifying pattern, we had to knit a minimum size. Everybody was allowed to knit it bigger because that takes longer, but you weren't allowed to knit it smaller if you wanted to either qualify or go on to the next round. So this is the qualifying socks. And I did not write down the name. Can't believe I forgot that. Um, well, I'll link all the socks I talk about underneath the video. So if you want to know um, what this is called, I'm so sorry I forgot that. It's one of my favorite patterns in all of the sock madness. It's such a beautiful pattern. It's easy to knit. And um, yeah, I used Opal Yarn Beauty. The Beauty um, series was a new series um, from this year. And the yarn has some vitamin E and something in it to make it softer, to make it good for the hands while you knit and good for your skin while you wear it. And it's supposed to last several washes. So it's a really nice yarn. And I chose a green yarn because I'm going to donate these socks for a, to an organization in Germany that helps women with ovarian cancer. And as a symbol of their help, they try to give every woman um, a pair of green socks together with information and office of help. And so I thought if I use green, it doesn't matter what size I end up knitting, I can donate them and I hope some woman who's in hospital will be really happy to get these really beautiful socks. Yeah, so these are the qualifying socks. If you manage to knit these socks as per pattern within two weeks, then you qualified to take part and then you were put into a team. There were 26 teams and um, I ended up in team B and if you did not qualify you could still take part as a cheerleader. Um, that meant you would also get all the patterns but you didn't have to knit the, them to the size, you didn't have to knit within a, t a certain time frame. You were just cheering people on and taking part in the discussions and sharing pictures and opinions and all that kind of fun. And if you, yeah, I'll talk about getting to the next round with the next pair of socks. So that's the qualifying socks. And then once you qualified, um, you got into round one. And then the same thing happened. The information which materials we're going to need was being put on uh, into the group uh, on Ravelry. And then we knew within the next 48 hours we'll get the pattern. And from the moment the pattern dropped into your mailbox, you started knitting like crazy because from all the people in your t on your team, only the fastest, I think it was 50, um, got onto round two. So if you were the 51st or second to finish your socks, even if they were correct and the size was correct, um, you couldn't go on to round two. But you became a cheerleader, so you could still take part, you would still get patterns and so on and so forth. So that was um, round one pattern. It was called Evil Choices by Sabrina Nesslinger. And the choice that you had was, because this sock has so, so many pearl stitches, um, you had the choice of knitting it inside out. So the advantage of knitting it, it the right side out was that you could see with all the, um, there's lots of cables, in this pattern, you could see where your cables went and what you were doing, but you had to purl a million stitches. That's what I did for my first sock because I was a bit scared that if I didn't see what the cables were doing, I would make mistakes. But then I got so tired of purling all those stitches that with the second sock, I actually did knit it inside out. And, and she um, provides charts for both ways. So there's a chart for knitting the right sock inside out and the right sock right side out. And then another chart for the left sock this way and that way. And yes, there's a right and a left sock. So with these socks, you have to make sure you actually knit a right and a left sock so that the pattern is either on the outside of your feet or on the inside of your feet, but the socks are not the same. Yeah, so the second one I knit inside out. I thought it was a lot easier to do with knitting more stitches, purling fewer stitches and um, I did check the cables 
almost every round to make sure but you can just look on the inside of your sock and you can see if it works and because I'd already knit the first sock um, I um, wasn't too worried and I knew how things were going to happen one interesting fact um, that I got with these socks I was knitting on was I knitting on double pointed needles or yeah I was knitting on double pointed needles and I was getting these ladders so that the that means the last and first stitch of every needle was a bit too loose and that usually doesn't happen with me because I'm a tight knitter but I think it's because of purling the stitches it I probably I probably work them differently or maybe it's because of the purl stitch I don't know but with the second sock I just don't have these ladders and I use the same needles but by knitting the stitches, I just don't get these um, letters. I don't worry about them. I'm pretty sure they will more or less disappear once I wash the socks. I haven't washed them yet. I'm not keeping them. Again, the min minimum requirement size with the sock manners is just too big for me. My feet are fairly small, so I knew I couldn't keep any of the socks unless I changed them. But that's okay. And I have a friend who really liked the colors and the pattern. And she has bigger feet than me, so she's going to get these socks. And then she can wash them any way she likes. So that was round one. Um, I remember there was a Sunday where, where I spent most of the day knitting. Um, I always needed at least three or four days or five days to knit my socks because I did still do other stuff like working or housework <laughs> uh, during the sock madness. But I remember it took me quite a long time to knit these but it was still at the beginning, there were a lot, a lot of people taking part and so I finished on time. And then the second round was all the bees. And I have all my socks in a, diff in a wrong order. I thought I'd, um, I'd, order I'd put them in the right order, but somehow I didn't. And now I can't find the all the, oh here are the all the bees socks. Okay, sorry about the confusion. <laughs> so, round two was All the Bees by Knit Joys. And the bees was beads and brioche and what else? There were some other bees in the pattern, but this is what the sock looked like. Um, I used another opal yarn and the series was called Elegant. It's several years old, but it's... Um, not as colorful as most other opal yarns are. So I thought for a pattern that has a lot of things going on, I didn't want too many colors, so I thought that might work. And um, I used red beads, so it's a strong contrast, um, which I thought was a good thing for the competition because you have to put your pictures on Ravelry and then send an email that you're finished, and then they check your pictures on Ravelry to see if you got things right. And uh, so I thought, the more contrast I have with my beads, um, the better they can see if I did things correctly. And this sock started with a really interesting cast on where you have the beads right on top of your cast on. Really, really like this. Pretty sure I'll do it again. We were supposed to use two different color beads. So there's a silver one in the middle and then the red ones around. Um, the brioche stitch is that one here. Um, the lace is not a bee, so what else was a bee? I don't remember. Anyway, it's a beautiful pattern and my sister fell in love with the pattern when she saw it and uh, she likes the grey and the red. So when I finished, um, no, while I was knitting the sock, I put in a contrasting yarn at the point where I thought I needed to put the toe so it, fit my, it would fit my sister. And, but then I knit the whole sock to the required size. <laughs> And then yesterday I undid the toe, picked up the stitches again from the contrasting yarn I put in and knit another toe. And I wanted to do the second one as well, but I took this home to finish it at home and I left the first sock here in my shop. And I couldn't quite remember how I had placed the decreases because I have more stitches than I usually use for her socks. And if I'd done the regular toe, I usually do a star toe and it has a certain method to it but if I'd done that it would have been too big because I would measured the um, toe to be the same size that I usually knit for her plus I placed it so that it lined up with the end of this pattern 
So the pattern on the foot ends in this beautiful cross stitches um, and that's where I start the toe. But then when I was at home, I realized I couldn't remember how exactly I'd place the decreases on the first sock. So I didn't finish the second one. And this is all the yarn I unwound from knitting it to the required size. So that's quite funny. And the needle fit the beads perfectly, which is just coincidence, but it's fun and I like it. Yeah, so that was round two. That was all the bees I managed to finish in time. I was among the number that could go on to the next round. So I got into round three. And then round three's pattern was Belief in Yourself. And that was designed by Annette Schleicher. And she has a German podcast called The Nerd Knits. And um, I think she was quite excited to be... Um, a pattern designer for this year, Sock Manners. As far as I know, she's taken part in, in the Sock Manners for quite a lot of years already. And um, that was a pattern that had quite a few more brioche stitches than the last sock. It's a beautiful pattern. And the belief in yourself is not spelled like believe, but it's with L-E-A-F, so it's like a leaf, because there's lots of leaves in this pattern. So it starts off with a bit of a leaf pattern that you knit sideways, then you pick up stitches and then you knit down. And there's a two color pattern um, on the back of the leg and then it goes into these beautiful leaves um, in the heel, this interesting heel construction. And it has a two color brioche pattern on the front of the leg. And I know there was, there was lots of discussion about that and a lot of people found it really hard to do. Um, if you look on the inside of the sock, it shows the other color. So with two color brioche, you always have one color dominant on one side and you have the other color dominant on the other side. As the main color, I used another black dragon color by Opal and the orange is the um, neon orange by Opal. And I thought they look quite nicely they look quite nice together and um, yeah I really enjoyed knitting these socks because I had knit two color brioche before I know how to do a one pass two color brioche so it wasn't that difficult for me I felt the leg is really really long so even if I wanted to keep the socks I couldn't fit my 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 leg in here so I would have had to wear them like this because my calf starts and it's just too tight for me but um, I'm going to give them to my cousin. She has very slender long legs. I'm pretty sure they will fit her. And um, yeah, so that was very interesting to knit. It was a lot of work, but it's a beautiful pattern. And um, I could imagine maybe just taking this bit of the pattern and knitting it again, knitting it on the back and the front. Um, maybe I would use this brioche pattern for something else like, like uh, leg warmers or... Um, wrist warmers or a loop scarf or something like that. It's a beautiful pattern. It's just, I think it was a lot, it was very difficult for many people. And I was a bit surprised they picked this pattern for round three and not for a later round. But there you go. You never know how these things are being decided and I enjoyed knitting them. Then it was on to round four and the round four pattern is called Little Etude by Kawa Coffee. I'm not quite sure how to how to pronounce that and I used um, yeah, um, some Opal yarn from their prescri nicht prescription um, subscription yarn always mix up these words um, so it's in German it's called Abo um, so um, it's it was a ball of yarn that I had at home that I've had for several years and I really like and I really like the pattern and it has a musical name because Little Etude is from um, playing an instrument and you have these etudes where you practice little things and that's what she says happens in these socks because what you do is you have you wind eight little ball of yarns um, with one color and then eight with the other color and then you have your main color and you knit using 17 different strands of yarn and um, after a time you get into the rhythm of how you do these things and how you keep them running along and so I like the name, I like the pattern, I chose one of my favorite yarns, and these are my socks. Um, 
I'm keeping the warm-up socks because I could knit to my size and these are the only proper um, sock madness socks that I'm uh, going to keep for myself. So again, last night, uh, yesterday, I undid a good chunk of what I'd knit and the toe that I'd made and I put in a new toe. So they're quite a bit smaller than they were before and these are going to be my socks and I'm looking forward to wearing them. Before I can do that, I have to weave in the ends because <laughs> I did finish the knitting last night but I did not finish weaving in the ends. And just for you to see, this is what it looks like. This is what it looked like here. I did weave in these ends because I knew I wasn't going to change anything here, but because I knew I was going to undo the, the um, end or the front of the foot, I um, didn't weave in these ends. And you can see that this yarn had been knit. Um, yeah, so once I've woven in all these ends and the other, I have a new pair of socks that I can wear. Yeah, so that was round four and I finished on time. I managed to get into round five. And then round five pattern is called, was called Sweet Rose Socks. Another beautiful pattern by Atelier Midsummer's Eve. And I started knitting that pattern with another color of the Black Dragon series. The Black Dragon series was a new series beginning of this year. So I uh, really enjoyed knitting that. And I chose the green because I thought that I thought that'd be a nice background for the roses that we were supposed to add later. And But then I was worried that the pattern didn't really show up enough. So I only knitted like one or two pattern repeats and I was worried and I thought, if they can't see the pattern properly, maybe, um, they won't accept my socks. So I picked another yarn and that's the only non-opal yarn that I use. It's a hand dyed yarn by Voldacke, a German hand dyer. And I felt that the pattern showed up more clearly in this yarn. And I decided to um, use purple for the roses and green for the leaves. And we had to use again two different color beads and two different sizes again. So it's supposed to be a pearl in the middle and then some beads around and then you um, embroider these roses. And while I was knitting them again my sister said she really liked them, she likes the color and they actually fit. I think these were the smallest socks that we um, knit during the sock madness and um, so I said she could have them. And I finished knitting the socks, both the socks um, and I checked on Ravelry and I think there were still like three spots open in my group and I started embroidering roses. And I think I had done, I don't quite remember whether I had done the three or I had done all five on this sock. And we were supposed to embroider eight on each sock. And I was, I'd either done three or five, I don't remember. I checked and all the places were gone. So all the positions had been filled and uh, I knew I wasn't going to go on to the next round. So I talked to my sister and I said, do you want to have eight roses? And she said, oh no, I don't need them. And so I said, I'll put them on the fronts, but not on the back. And this is only there because I'd already done that before I realized um, I couldn't go on. And then I put those two on the other sock and this one, and this one is just the beads because my sister wanted to save me work and she said, oh, you don't have to put them, you don't have to put any, you can just put one or two. And I said, oh no, I have to at least do the front of the leg, otherwise it looks stupid. <laughs> so that's what I did. But I didn't want to unravel the beginning of the green sock. And I decided that once the sock madness is over, I'm going to finish the sock. I and I was going to change the leg because that's fairly long again. And I decided I would just knit one repeat of these like frames. And so I don't, I only have to embroider four of the roses, but I decided to make this bit a bit longer. So that comes up a bit higher. So when you wear shoes, um, the roses won't be in the way. So that's what I did. And that's these socks. So I added in a few more stitches before I started this kind of frame and then I embroidered four roses on each of the socks. 
I use different colors. It's the same color beads, but they sort of have different colors in themselves. And I decided to use different a different color for each flower. So each sock has all four colors. And these are going to be donated again um, to the green socks for the women who suffer from cancer. Yeah, so I became a cheerleader uh, after round five. So round six and seven, I wasn't competing anymore. And then the round six pattern is the Madeline Socks by Kate Poe. And that's that, this beauty. So this is an all over uh, color work pattern. It's an afterthought heel. It has this um, hem that you fold over. And again, it's a fairly long leg and nothing ever repeats. So you have to look at the pattern the whole time. So it took me a really long time to do these. At first I planned to also donate these socks, but then I realized that they fit my cousin perfectly and she loved them. So she's going to get them. I will knit other socks that I donate, but these will be a Christmas present for my cousin. I hope it's going to be a Christmas present because this is sock number two. So I'm still working on that. I had a plan of knitting 10 rounds every week. By If I keep doing that, they should be done by Christmas. I'm not really good at actually doing that, but we'll see. I'll try and get them done. So that was round six. Round seven was a beautiful two-color sock knit sideways. I really like the pattern. Maybe I will do it one day. Haven't started them yet but I have started one of the bonus patterns. So if you finished a sock within, the within I think, two weeks time, so even if you didn't get to the next round, you got a bonus pattern every round. And I haven't knit any of the bonus patterns yet, but last night I cast on the first bonus pattern that I really wanted to do, and that's the Mayborn Morn socks by Eva Romain. Not quite sure how to pronounce that. I used another beauty opal yarn. So that's the, um, I need one other pair with that, that yarn, but that's beauty. And as I said, it has some vitamin E and it's, it's really soft and beautiful. And um, this is what I have knit so far. So I've only done the cuff and I've started the pattern. It's a lace pattern with beads. So... I think you can see, you can see those three beads. It's always three beads next to each other and it's a lace pattern and I think it's really beautiful and um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to finishing these socks and um, once I've finished these and I've finished everything else I've started so far, I will have knit 11 socks out of this year's Sock Madness socks. I know there are people, for example, Annette from the Nerd Knits, she wants I think she wants to knit, or maybe she already has knit all the patterns um, that came out with the Sock Madness, which is quite mad, but uh, quite amazing as well. I won't. I won't knit all the patterns, but I want to finish the three socks that I still have on the needles right now. And maybe I'll choose one of some other pattern at some point in time. Yeah, but that's all the Sock Madness that I went through <laughs> this year. And um, I'm seriously thinking of signing up again next year. And then we'll see what happens then. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.